We are providing online one-to-one -one PTE coaching with authentic practice material. After enrolling in our PTE courses, you will get continuous material updates for next six months. For more information, visit our website, careercoves.com or WhatsApp us on given numbers. True to their name, boa constrictors squeeze the life out of their prey. But how does a boa know it's snuffed out a rat? The snake listens for a heartbeat. When it stops, that's the cue to let go, according to a study in the journal Biology Letters. Researchers outfitted rat cadavers with artificial beating hearts. They used dead rats to control for other signs of passing, like muscle spasms. Then they warmed up the rats, set the hearts pumping, and dangled them in front of hungry boas. The snakes attacked, and as long as that rat heart kept thumping, the boas kept tightening their coils and applying bursts of pressure, sometimes for more than 20 minutes. But as soon as scientists killed the heartbeat, the boas loosened up. Even captive-born boas who'd never hunted live prey paid attention to the pulse, suggesting the behavior is innate. And for good reason. The authors say constriction takes a lot of energy, and it can be dangerous, say, if an enemy strikes while the snake's coiled around its quarry. But by following the telltale heart, boas can keep the pressure on just long enough before a relaxing meal. Dogs aren't just man's best friend. Previous studies have shown that kids with dogs are less likely to develop asthma. Now a new study may show how, if results from mice apply to us. The work was presented at a meeting of the American Society for Microbiology. The study tests what's called the hygiene hypothesis. The idea is that extreme cleanliness may actually promote disease later on. Researchers collected dust from homes that had a dog. They fed that house dust to mice. They then infected the mice with a common childhood infection called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. Mice who ate the dog dust were protected against RSV infection symptoms, like inflamed, mucus-coated airways, suggesting exposure helped them stave off the virus. Those mice also had more diverse communities of gut bacteria than control mice did. Researchers say our pets' microbes may colonize our gut, too, and help the immune system learn to respond to infections. That's important because when kids develop severe RSV, their risk of asthma goes up. So next time Buster sheds all over the couch, think of it as a bonus dose of probiotics. Every time you inhale, oxygen passes from your windpipe to your lungs and on into your bloodstream. But what if your windpipe was blocked? Getting the gas straight to your blood could save your life. Wait, put down that syringe. A large air bubble in a blood vessel can kill you. But what if the bubbles were only a few millionths of a meter in diameter? Researchers coated tiny amounts of oxygen gas with fatty molecules to create microparticles. Suspended in solution, the microparticles formed a foam containing 50 to 90 percent oxygen. In a beaker of blood, the foam was able to quickly transfer its oxygen to the cells. 
Then the researchers tested it in animals. Normally, a blocked windpipe cuts off the blood supply of oxygen, leading to brain damage and death. But when rabbits with blocked windpipes received injections of the microparticles, their blood oxygen levels and heart rates remained stable. The work is in the journal Science Translational Medicine. The foam may someday buy time for human patients, so that even someone with a closed airway can breathe easy. Global warming might seem like a botanical boon. After all, milder temperatures and more carbon dioxide and nitrogen should feed flora. But a 10-year study has found that any initial positive effect on plant growth from climate change may soon disappear. The report is in the journal Nature Climate Change. Researchers transplanted vegetation from four grassland ecosystems to lower, warmer elevations. They also modified the precipitation at the transplant sites based on altered rainfall estimates. For the first year, the plants did great, producing more biomass and churning out more oxygen for us. But their productivity went down for the rest of the decade. What happened? Warming did speed up the nitrogen cycle, which should have increased nitrogen's availability as plant fertilizer, but a lot of the nitrogen left the soil through runoff or uptake into the atmosphere. In addition, productive native plants began to lose out to species that thrive at higher temperatures but are less productive than the natives. Warmer temperatures may spur immediate growth, but in the long term, we can't expect plants to like it hot. Americans still fall short of the recommended daily portions of fruit and vegetables, and kids are notoriously averse to veggies at the school cafeteria. So researchers tested whether visual cues of healthful foods could increase consumption at a grade school with 800 students. First, the scientists determined how many kids put carrots and green beans on their trays and how much they ate. Three months later, they did the same analysis. But on the second day, the trays had pictures of carrots and green beans in the tray's compartments. On the day with the photo cues, more than twice as many kids took green beans as on the control day, and more than three times as many kids took carrots. Average consumption per student went up as well. The study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The researchers note that the effect needs to be tested elsewhere for longer than two days, and the amount of veggies eaten still didn't meet the government recommendations. But if pictures of burgers can sell meaty meals, Maybe fresh fruit and veggie photos can play a part in the campaign for healthier kids.
If you enjoy sharing all your likes and dislikes on Facebook, you're definitely not alone. Research finds that broadcasting personal opinions gives people the same sense of reward as earning money. The study is in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Study subjects had their brains scanned while they either talked about their opinions or judged the beliefs of another, and sharing their own point of view stimulated more activity in the reward processing parts of the subjects' brains. In another experiment, participants got to choose among reporting their own opinion, judging someone else's opinion, or answering a true or false question, and for each choice they could earn varying amounts of money. Rather than maximize their winnings by answering the questions that were worth the most cash, people preferred to talk about themselves, even though they sacrificed an average of 17% of their potential earnings to do it. For the participants, sharing personal information was its own reward, which means that people like comedian Patton Oswalt, who tweets photos of what he's having for lunch, probably feel like a million bucks. Music, film, and video game makers face a new online digital world, and some are testing a revolutionary pricing system, pay what you want. But a new study finds that when consumers can name their own price, many opt out of buying at all. The study is in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. For the research, tour boat passengers posed for photos. Each boat ride announced a price of $15 per picture, but they then charged either $15, $5, or the option to pay what you want. As expected, the fewest tourists purchased photos when they had to pay full price, but more customers bought photos when they cost $5 than when prices were pay what you want, which could have saved passengers even more. The researchers suggest that choosing to pay less than an announced, lower-than-expected price made people feel cheap. With choices then limited to spending more money or feeling like a tightwad, potential customers simply opted out of the purchase. So on sea or land, a low set price may catch the most fish. On election day, where do you vote? If it's in a church, you might be inclined to vote more conservatively than if you cast your ballot at a school or government building. That's according to research published in the International Journal for the Psychology of Religion. And the effect seems to hold, whether you're Christian, Muslim, or agnostic, progressive, independent, or conservative. The study found that when random people were surveyed in front of a church, they gave more socially and politically conservative responses than people surveyed while standing in front of a government building. The shift in people's attitudes, the researchers suggest, was likely a result of visual priming, meaning that people who could see the religious building were, consciously or not, getting cues that influenced their response. The surveys were conducted in Europe, so it's possible American voters might react differently. But the survey included subjects from more than 30 countries to try to minimize a particular national bias. So, before you cast your vote this election year, think about whether your view is influencing your views.
As it ages, white paper turns a distinctive yellow. But why? To find out, scientists artificially aged modern paper to reveal the changes on the molecular level. The research is in the journal Physical Review Letters. For 48 days, three unbleached paper samples aged rapidly in reactors that simulated different environmental conditions. The researchers then compared the artificially aged samples to the real deal, three pieces of paper crafted in 15th century Europe. This technique allowed them to gauge the types and amounts of changes going on. About 90% of the weight of old paper is cellulose, the sturdy material that makes up plant cell walls. But over time, cellulose fibers oxidize. The process modifies parts of various molecules and turns them into what are called chromophores, which absorb light. White paper is white because it reflects all colors of light. Aging paper filled with chromophores reflects wavelengths that make it look yellow. The non-destructive technique used in this study could inform research to preserve and even whiten ancient texts and art, and give paper conservation a brighter outlook. Does an ice-cold drink actually taste better than the same beverage at room temperature? Depends on what its taste is. A new study finds that the intensity of some flavors varies with temperature. The work is in the journal Chemosensory Perception. Researchers took solutions that tasted bitter, sour, sweet, or astringent, a flavor found in legumes and raw produce that creates a dry, puckering feel in the mouth. They either chilled the solutions to 5 degrees Celsius, the recommended temperature for keeping food cool, or heated the solution to 35 degrees Celsius, a couple degrees below human body temperature. Volunteers then rated the tastes. Both sour and astringent solutions tasted stronger at warm temperatures, and the intensity lasted longer than it did with chilled drinks. Bitter flavors came through best when chilled, and temperature had no effect on perception of sweetness. For most people, temperature can enhance flavors, but for some, dubbed thermal tasters, temperature alone can be a flavor. Heating or cooling parts of the tongue creates the sensation of taste without food, a finding that's hard to swallow. Scientists are looking for Earth-like planets around other stars, but one way to limit the search can be to figure out where an Earth-like planet cannot exist and eliminate those types of systems. In a new study, astronomers turned their attention to so-called hot Jupiters. These are Jupiter-sized planets that have an orbit of only about three days. The scientists looked at 63 hot Jupiters to see if they could find evidence for any nearby Earth-like planets. They found none. But it could be that the companion planets are too small in size or mass or just aren't detectable with the current techniques. So the researchers then turned to hot Neptunes and warm Jupiters. These are Jupiters with slightly longer orbits. They found only two potential nearby planets among 222 hot Neptunes. And of the 31 warm Jupiters, five showed evidence of a companion. The findings are in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The current theory is that hot Jupiters formed and then migrated in towards their stars. Researchers say that the migration might have, quote, disrupted the formation of Earth-like planets. Good thing our Jupiter kept its cool.
Just like corporations, stars too can engage in mergers and acquisitions. A new study has identified a pair of white dwarf stars heading toward a merger. White dwarfs are the hot, super dense remnants of spent stars. In a binary system called J0651, two white dwarfs circle each other very rapidly. The binary pairing completes an orbit in less than 13 minutes. And that already rapid orbital dance is speeding up as the two white dwarfs spiral in on each other. Each year, their orbital period shrinks by 0.3 milliseconds. That's actually a pretty dramatic change on astronomical timescales. In about a million years, the white dwarfs will get so close that the larger one will start to cannibalize its smaller companion. Before long, the two stars will likely become one. The study appears in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. The tightly wound white dwarf binary should also be radiating gravitational waves, ripples in the fabric of space and time. But today's gravitational wave detectors are not sensitive enough to detect them. That's okay. Astronomers have another million years before things get really interesting to build an instrument that's up to the task. Interesting sound. I would have guessed a Wild West performer was practicing with a bullwhip while also vacuuming. But no, that sound is apparently produced by the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Since 2000, researchers at Finland's Aalto University have been collecting audio as part of what's called the Aurora Acoustics Project. Folk tales had long held that the lights also produce odd sounds, but the claims were hard to prove, and some researchers thought that any noises produced by the energetic particles that cause the light show would be far too high in the sky to be heard on the ground. But the latest results indicate that at least some sounds are produced very close to the ground. A setup of three ground-based microphones allowed researchers to estimate that the sounds occur perhaps just 70 meters up. The results were just presented at the International Congress on Sound and Vibration in Vilnius, Lithuania. More information about the sounds of the Northern Lights could lead to a more complete understanding of the phenomenon. So if you see an aurora, keep your ears open. It's not easy being yellow. Bananas now face two separate fungal epidemics which threaten to pluck the fruit off of our tables. Fortunately, researchers have now sequenced banana DNA, producing the genome of a banana variety that may hold the secret to defeating the diseases. The report is in the journal Nature. Today, half of all bananas, including the ones you probably buy, belong to the Cavendish variety, whose popularity stems in part from having no seeds. But this trait also removes sexual reproduction from the equation. The bananas are thus all genetically identical and identically vulnerable to the two fungal epidemics, Panama disease and black leaf streak disease. Researchers sequenced the genome of a banana variety called D.H. Pahang, whose genes contributed to the Cavendish. While the genome shows where this fruit fits in the history of plant evolution, it could also help researchers understand why D.H. Pahang, unlike its descendant, is resistant to the funguses behind both Panama and black leaf streak disease. Knowing the genes responsible for this resistance could help breeders create stronger, more resistant bananas, which has a lot of appeal.
The London Olympics are about to begin, and spectators will again be riveted by feats that would have been impossible when the modern Olympics began in 1896. Jaw-dropping records are attainable in part because of advances in material science. New materials have led to equipment like super light and strong bolting poles and bathing suits that improve the flow of bodies in water. Such developments are detailed in a series of articles in the journal Nature Materials. The scientists say other advances are afoot that build sensors into athletes' clothing for, for instance, measuring performance in training, or protective gear that repairs itself when damaged. And advances in material science can help Olympians internally as well. Elite athletes may tear cartilage or break bones, but cartilage doesn't have enough blood and cells to mend well, and sometimes bones just can't naturally bridge the break. So scientists are homing in on the best combinations of biocompatible materials, along with growth factors and other compounds, as well as implanted cells and proteins, to help mend what have been until now nearly intractable injuries, so that world-class athletes can push the limits of sports and science. Thanks for watching this video. For more updates by Career Coves, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.